You can take it on good authority that just about every single island with a human population is also home to a whole host of cool and interesting monsters, but one of the more unique creature catalogs we found in the Philippines, where a weirdly large proportion of the local monsters are specifically vampires. From flying torsos that drink blood, to disembodied entrails that drink blood, and even bipedal dogs that… well, you get the idea. While the international term of vampire is still a pretty apt descriptor of these guys, they're actually called Aswings, and there are a million of them. So I'll try and keep this part brief by sticking with some of my favorites. The Mandarugo was a young beautiful woman whose many husbands had a nasty habit of mysteriously dying days after the wedding. I wonder if there's some kind of common denominator to these many many deaths that might explain the strange occurrence. Yeah, probably not, but her latest husband certainly thought so, since he quickly began to sleep with a knife inconspicuously tucked beneath the covers. And if you're worried he might not get to use it, then you needn't fret, for that very same night he was awoken by the unmistakable feeling of a serrated tongue draining the blood from his chest. Upon feeling such a typical and well-known sensation, he quickly stabbed his assailant to death, and surprise surprise, it was his dearly beloved. Allow me to fan you gently so you won't go into shock. From humid to frigid, let's talk about the islands of Alaska and northern Canada. Starting with the Egg also known as the Boomer, for the strange booming sounds it produces and not because it was born in the 1950s. It's said to resemble no other living creature, possessing a single eye, a nose inside its gaping mouth, and all four limbs sprouting from the back half of its body. But I won't accept that. To me, it kind of looks like an elephantine giraffe weevil with the face of a copepod. See, it resembles not one, but three living creatures. None of which live in Alaska, so I guess their point still stands. Anyway, the Iktuk was one of the many helping spirits of a Narcoc, an Inuit shaman from the Roaring Twenties. But one spirit he was unable to recruit to the cause was a Kigatilic, since he ran away in fear as soon as it emerged from the ice. And yeah, I don't blame him, I mean look at this thing. But speaking of this thing, it's said to be as big as a bear, but taller, which I think is kinda ridiculous. You can't be as big as something, but also bigger than that thing, you gotta pick a lane. Moving on, let's stretch the definition of island and talk about Australia, where most of the monsters seem to be just regular animals, but bigger. You'd think Australians would have had enough of that kind of thing by now, but I guess not. For something a little more unique, you could turn your attention to the Moa Moa, a large aquatic creature whose name somehow translates to Dangerous Turtle, or even the Nadubi, a thorn-laden demon that looks absolutely terrifying despite the fact that it's completely invisible 99% of the time. But of course, I can't have a section on Australian monsters without talking about the one and only drop bear, a subgroup of vicious predatory koalas that make their living by climbing into trees and jumping down on the first man, woman, or child unlucky enough to stumble into view. Funnily enough, these creatures don't originate from any actual folklore and were specifically designed to scare tourists, a goal that I support 100%. In fact, you know what? Scratch everything I just said. Drop bears are very real and very dangerous, and if you're going to Australia, keep your eyes peeled. And just to cover all bases, let's take a look at some old world island monsters. The Dulhan is essentially Ireland's take on the classic Headless Horseman, taking the form of a grimly dressed gentleman whose disembodied spinal cord he uses as a flail and whose skeletal head he cradles like a baby. He obviously rides a jet black horse, which is also headless, but sometimes he'll mix things up by riding a carriage made from coffins and gravestones pulled by six horses all of which are headless. Honestly, my main problem with this guy is just how tacky he is. Like, sure, you were cool when you were using your spinal cord as a flail, but once you started driving around in the coffin mobile and beheading your own horses, it got a little stale. So if this horseman wasn't wretched enough for you, then might I suggest the Nukalevi, a terrible demon that struck fear in the hearts of native Arcadians up until the not so distant past. Appearing as a flayed ape-like man melded to an equally skinless mount, it's no wonder why this beast was so terrifying to those who saw it at first glance. But upon closer inspection, there are just as many details that make this little guy sound more goofy than anything else. Like its head being 10 times the size of a regular human's and the fact that it's deathly afraid of rainfall and fresh water, despite it being semi-aquatic. A lot of them also live in the ocean, but are constantly bullied by the local ocean gods. Poor guys are probably only acting out as a defense mechanism. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today, but the force finders for this week are Timestorm, Pomon, 1-0, and this guy with the most horrendous YouTube username I have ever seen. Mad respect, my guy. They were all the first to find their respective flourishes, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention White Trash Butterfly, who found a completely unrelated easter egg I also hid in the video. Also, if you haven't yet seen the World War II video, I would strongly recommend it. I think it's one of the best videos I've made on the channel, but very few people have seen it so far. So check it out. But either way, make sure you keep your eyes peeled for floor sightings, drop bears, or any other easter eggs. And if you see any, make sure to mention them in the comments down below or on my Discord server. Link in the description. And until next time, don't die. See you later.